I'm Brett Bingham, rangeland technician from the Eastern Oregon Agricultural Research Center with an Eastern Oregon Ag Minute. Over the next five days, I will be discussing remote sensing and some of its applications linked with geographical information systems. Remote sensing is defined as obtaining reliable information about physical objects and the environment through the process of recording, measuring, and interpreting imagery and digital representations of energy patterns derived from a sensor that is not in contact with the object or energy pattern. Examples of sensors used to gather information remotely consist of spaceborne satellites, cameras mounted in aircraft, and other specialized sensors that can be handheld or mounted on the ground surface. Many of the sensors can quickly gather information about a large surface area on the ground making data acquisition more economical and quicker than physically obtaining the data no manually. Yesterday I talked generally about remote sensing and some, some types of sensors that can gather information. Between 1975 and 1978, NASA launched satellites that had the ability to collect data about the Earth's surface and vegetation that could be used in management of land. As of now, they continue to launch improved satellites into space that gives us images with much better resolution. All of the images that are acquired in space from these satellites are archived and can be purchased by anyone. You can order a series of images of the same location on the ground for all the years that the satellites have been logging images. A collection of images of the same location over a number of years can be analyzed for vegetation and landscape changes. The information of the analysis can reflect what management has been effective and what management has not and provides good insights on what should be done in the future to increase the productivity of our rangelands. Yesterday I talked about the vast amount of images that have been acquired by satellites over the years. Recently in my graduate studies at the University of Idaho, I conducted a study using remote sensing and GIS to characterize and predict areas of potential yellow star thistle infestation. To begin the study, I acquired a yellow star thistle survey map that was taken in northern Idaho by a helicopter in 1987. Next, I was able to acquire images during 10 consecutive months in 1987 that was taken by the Landsat satellite. The images and maps were overlaid along with the slope and aspect coverage of the same area. Overlaying the three maps and accompanying information resulted in a final map that contained all of the information that each one provided. The geographical information system could now do many different analysis, including an estimate of green growing vegetation on the ground. Yesterday I discussed how different images and maps were combined into a geographic information system or GIS. Images captured by spaceborne satellites have a value attached to them based on the amount of reflection on the ground when the images were acquired. Different calculations and ratios can be calculated on the individual pixel number that corresponds to the images. Some of the ratios calculated from the images are very helpful in interpreting the objects and vegetation on the ground. Using a specific index meant for vegetation analysis, I was able to get a good indication of the amount of green growing vegetation at different combinations of slope and aspect where yellow star thistle grows and doesn't grow. In North Idaho, it has been found that yellow star thistle grows best at certain slopes and aspects. Characterizing the slopes and aspects prone to a yellow star thistle infestation using remotely sensed images helped in understanding the environment that yellow star thistle grows. Yesterday I talked about how remote sensing and GIS provided needed information that was helpful in characterizing potential areas of yellow star thistle infestations. Many other applications can be applied with remote sensing such as monitoring weed infestations, estimating crop yield, and estimating forage on the rangeland, just to name a few. Typically, images are too costly for small producers. Therefore, many universities and government agencies such as the USDA Agricultural Research Center and USDI Bureau of Land Management develop extensive programs in GIS and remote sensing that can benefit both farming and ranching operations of all sizes. I'm Brett Bingham. Thanks for listening.